Nantucket is our home, but a sustainable future takes work. So how do we get there? Already the Nantucket Conservation Foundation, the Nantucket Land Council, and the Linda Loring Nature Foundation have been working to protect and preserve Nantucket for generations to come. Positive impacts. And we can all help. Visit NantucketFootprints.org, the island's environmental, resiliency, and sustainability resource. Join us. Welcome to Nantucket Island. This episode of Welcome to the Gray Lady will introduce you to some of the island's historic landmarks and showcase our cultural district in the downtown area of Nantucket. Since the Roaring Twenties, the island of Nantucket has been a place where visual artists, writers, actors, musicians, architects, and designers have washed ashore to practice their creativity and live life to the fullest. In 2016, the Massachusetts Cultural Council approved a cultural district designation for Nantucket. A cultural district is an official designation by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, highlighting concentrated areas with significant organizations that promote the arts, humanities, and sciences. Nantucket has a burgeoning cultural community that lasts well beyond the summer weather. Visitors from around the world come to visit Nantucket each year throughout the year to participate in the exceptional experiences our community offers. There are many unique combinations that often celebrate history, environmental sciences, traditional philosophies, as well as innovative thinking. Let's start with the Nantucket Historical Association. That organization was formed in 1894, and its mission is to preserve and interpret the history of Nantucket through its programs, collections, and properties. Three of these properties are highlighted in this episode. The NHA's principal property, the Whaling Museum, is located in the center of the downtown cultural district. The Whaling Museum is an absolute must-see when visiting Nantucket. With over a thousand works of art, artifacts, and treasures on display, it tells many of the island's fascinating stories from the past four centuries. Inside the museum, visitors will experience a 46-foot sperm whale skeleton, numerous gallery spaces, a restored 1847 candle factory, and a rooftop deck offering stunning views of Nantucket Harbor. The oldest house, also known as the Jethro Coffin House, was built in 1686 and is believed to be the oldest residence on Nantucket still on its original site. The island's English population at that time totaled several hundred. The native Wampanoag outnumbered them by at least three to one. Built as a wedding gift for Jethro Coffin and Mary Gardner, the house represents the union of two of the island's oldest families. In 1923, the NHA acquired the property and undertook an extensive restoration to return the house to its historic appearance. In 1968, it was declared a National Historic Landmark and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The old mill was built in 1746 by Nathan Wilbur, a Nantucket sailor who had spent time in Holland. The mill is still capable of grinding corn, just as it did 250 years ago. It is believed to be the oldest American windmill in continuous operation. It was designated an American Society of Mechanical Engineers Historical Mechanical Engineering Landmark in 1992. Loins Observatory was built in 1968 and expanded in 1998. The two domes of this facility house a beautifully refurbished antique eight-inch Clark telescope and a new state-of-the-art 24-inch research telescope. It serves as an active research observatory 
and also as a venue for astronomical programs that are open to the public. Because Nantucket is an island 30 miles out to sea, details in the night sky are much more visible here than they are on the mainland. So when something noteworthy happens in the night sky, such as meteor showers, a new comet, star explosions, or a lunar eclipse, the Mariah Mitchell Observatory is the place to be. The Nantucket Athenaeum was founded in 1834 and was originally a members-only institution. It had a circulating collection of books, hosted meetings and lectures, and exhibited small collections of whaling and South Seas artifacts brought home by Nantucket mariners. Unfortunately, the original building was lost during the Great Fire of 1846. However, within six months of its destruction, a new Athenaeum was opened in 1847. Through the Athenaeum's educational and cultural programs, it has welcomed some of the best minds and spirits since its doors were first opened. For example, it hosted speeches from the following historical leaders. Frederick Douglass, reformer and writer devoted to abolishing slavery and discrimination. Lucretia Mott, women's rights advocate. Henry David Thoreau, writer and philosopher. Lucy Stone, women's rights advocate. And Ralph Waldo Emerson, writer, poet, and advocate of social reforms. That tradition continues to this day. The Nantucket Athenaeum has truly redefined the meaning of traditional library. Of course, loaning books is still part of the service offered, yet the Nantucket Athenaeum goes much further. It is a core organization that gives the gift of learning to all ages and cultures for free. The Nantucket Dreamland Theater was initially constructed in 1832 as a Quaker meeting house and hosted open meetings supporting the abolition of slavery. It subsequently housed a factory producing straw hats and then a roller skating rink in 1880. In 1911, the space was renamed the Dreamland Theater. In addition to showing the latest moving pictures, the theater hosted vaudeville entertainment. Ten years later, the Dreamland Theater was renovated and served as Nantucket's primary entertainment venue for over 80 years. In 2007, the Dreamland Foundation purchased the building and provided it with a much needed renovation after 80 years of service. The Dreamland Foundation not only restored the theater to its former glory, but also made it into the world-class performing arts center offering both movies and live performances that it is today. The Culinary Center's doors opened in 2016. The center networks with the island's farming and fishing communities for sustainable food. It has attracted world-class talent to offer cooking classes and demonstration events that result in rave tasting reviews and the learning of cooking techniques and tips that will last a lifetime. The Nantucket Community Music Center was founded in 1975. Over time, it grew into a full-fledged music school and is presently located in a completely renovated home at 56 Center Street. Upon entering this historic building, one typically is met with the sounds of distant musical melodies emanating throughout the rooms. The flow of the music ranges from classical to contemporary. Venturing downstairs, one will find soundproof practice rooms and a cutting edge recording studio. The Nantucket Community Music Center offers education and resources that both professionals and music students value. There is a recital parlor in which choirs sing and concerts are performed throughout the year for those who love to listen to music. The African Meeting House is located at 29 York Street. This small post and beam building is a National Historic Landmark 
and is the island's physical reminder of a thriving 19th century Black community. In 1774, Seneca Boston, a weaver and formerly enslaved man, and his wife, Thankful Micah, a Native American, purchased this land on Nantucket, built their home, and established the African Meeting House on their property. African American families have owned and occupied the buildings for over 200 years. Florence Higginbottom purchased the property in 1920. Eventually, her family sold the property to the Museum of African American History in 2001. The African Meeting House offers cultural programs and interpretive exhibits on the history of African Americans on Nantucket, as well as a map of the Black Heritage Trail on Nantucket. We hope you enjoyed this episode and you were inspired to explore our cultural district. Please be kind to the island's natural beauty and leave only footprints on the sand and cobblestones. Remember to download our interactive insider guides. They serve as great resources that expand upon the material presented in our episodes. This program is made possible by the continuous support of the Remain Nantucket Fund and the Community Foundation of Nantucket.